an enormous response to last night's reality check of the Ron Paul newsletters. Today, the writer who first released copies of the newsletters contacted Ben to set the record straight on who else was writing some of those newsletters. Ben has the information that isn't being reported anywhere else, and he's sharing it in a reality check reply all. First of all, let me thank the writer, James Kirchick, for getting back with me today. I told you last night that in 2007, the New Republic magazine published copies of the Ron Paul Report, the Ron Paul Strategy Guide, etc. In those newsletters, there were some passages that could be deemed racist and certainly inappropriate. One caveat, though, I also pointed out that the author of those articles, James Kirchick, mentions that none of the racist newsletters have a byline, except for one. The only problem, back in 2007, he did not disclose the name of that writer or which edition he or she wrote, until today. For the first time, I'm going to share with you the name of that writer. Take a look. It is a 1993 edition of the Ron Paul Strategy Guide. The article? How to Protect Against Urban Violence, and the author, one James B. Powell. After four years of reports on these newsletters from all kinds of media outlets, I have not seen this guy's name anywhere. And the full eight pages, well, they match so closely to some of the other so-called racist newsletters, it is stunning. Powell writes about the 1992 riots in Los Angeles, as well as what he calls the Holocaust coming to America's urban areas. He calls California Congresswoman Maxine Waters a militant leader. And the article goes on to talk about how to be self-reliant when well-armed gangs move in to threaten your home. Like the other newsletters, it's not racist per se, but certainly could be deemed questionable or insensitive. And certainly the content of that newsletter, very similar in style to the other so-called racist newsletters. But there is a bigger issue than just Ron Paul here. What you may not know is that in this presidential election cycle, every single candidate for president, including President Obama himself, has been called a racist. Herman Cain was called a racist because he said that blacks had been brainwashed into voting for the Democratic Party. Mitt Romney called a racist by Bill Mayer because he's a Mormon and called a racist by MSNBC for continually calling the president by his first and last names instead of saying President Obama. New Gingrich was called a racist a few months ago for calling Palestinians an invented people. Michelle Bachman called a racist a few months ago after saying African American children and black families were better off during slavery, presumably because they had both parents living with them. She said she was taken out of context. Rick Perry, he was called a racist for a name spray painted on a rock at a hunting camp rented by his family. Also saying he was taken out of context, by the way, one of the latest claims against Rick Santorum, he's being called a racist for a supposed statement that he made that blacks shouldn't receive welfare. He says he didn't say that. And of course, President Obama himself has been called a racist by many people, including Glenn Beck, who triggered a firestorm after saying that he believes President Obama doesn't like white people. President Obama also called a racist for attending the Reverend Wright's church for 20 years. So here's what you need to know. The talk of racism has become the lowest form of political discourse. But even, even as I just went down that list of candidates, some of you at home thought to yourselves how the candidates you don't like, well, they probably are racist. And when you heard the name of a candidate you support, you thought, no, that's ridiculous. See how it works? Anything that can be deemed insensitive these days is called racist. Anyone who stands too close to those who say those things are racist. Under the examples I just gave you, are they all racist? Maybe none of them are. How about this year? We try to have an election based on substance and on ideas and on political record rather than on name calling. And that is Reality Check. One thing I want to make clear, this report was posted by the New Republic with the byline of James B. Powell in 2008, but the link to the newsletter was separate from the other articles that were linked by TNR that were suspected of being written by Dr. Paul. And even though the story was posted in the original article, Powell's name was never used. For the past four years, we have searched for and looked for any reports about this story and not found a single one about Powell and the Ron Paul newsletters, even from the New Republic. I'm going to post the entire eight pages of his newsletter at the end of this story on our website. You can read it for yourself. Along with that, you can read excerpts from the Ron Paul Strategy Guide. You can p compare them for yourself. As I mentioned, the writing strikingly similar. If you'd like to make your voice heard on this story, you can comment on my Facebook page. Just search facebook.com slash Ben Swan Reality Check. Well, good news.